Hello everyone, I welcome you all for this video session which deals with the approach to the environment for the preliminary examination 2020. In this session what we are going to do is that we are going to see the important areas and the topics for the environment preliminary examinations which are important considering the past year papers. Right? Now as we are knowing that the environment section is gaining more weightage and the number of questions are also increasing and the way the questions are being asked are of more diverse nature and are in dynamic in nature right so we need to have a focused and a particular strategy to tackle the questions of environment so this video session will help you to basically know the important areas and how our preparation should go out go in a particular direction right so the aim and objective of this video session to sum up is that to basically know the important focus areas and the topics which we uh, need to prepare in more details and which UPSC is frequently focusing upon. Also, we are not going to see in detail the every question rather we are only going to see the important areas right and depending upon these areas we will devise our strategy and finalize our strategy. But before starting this session first we should know how many number of questions that UPSC has asked in the past years from 2013 and why 2013 because from 2013 the UPSC changed the syllabus and the pattern of the examination has been changed right. So we see the number of questions from 2013 till the previous year that is 2019 and also we see the syllabus. So if we see the trend and analysis right if we see the trend analysis of the number of questions from 13 till 19 what we are able to notice is that if you see this bar graph in 2019 there were 20 questions in 2013 there are around 16 to 17 questions right so an average around 15 to 18 questions are always focused upon the environment section so this 15 to 18 questions will amount to around 36 marks out of 200 marks right so this shows us the importance of the environment section right and to qualify for the preliminary examination and for both that is for forest also and civil service also this section will play a pivotal role so henceforth we will now see depending upon this trend we will see this what is the syllabus UPSC has us given us. The syllabus mentioned by UPSC for preliminary examination of the environment is the environment ecology, biological diversity and climate change where you do not need the special subject sub specialization right. So depending upon this and by analyzing the last year papers what we have done, done is that we have divided these areas mainly in seven topics that is ecology, then pollution, biological diversity, protected areas climate change, acts and policies, international environment convention and treaties right. So ecology mainly deals with the ecology topics mainly deals with the basic concepts. The concepts like ecotone, ecological niche, what is habitat right. Environmental pollution will deal with mainly with the air pollution, water, land pollution, then solid waste management pollution, e-waste pollution, what are the various initiatives taken by the government, what are the policies initiated right what are the various pollutants, uh, eutrophication process right. So all these pollution related basics and the contemporary aspects are included in this topic of environment pollution. Biological diversity mainly focuses upon the basics that where is biological diversity present, why is that a particular area is having a high biological diversity or a low biological diversity. Then what are the various animal species and the plant species in a particular area, what are the characteristic features that are focused in this topic. Protected area network mainly deals with the protected areas like biosphere reserves, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. Climate change is a recent phenomena and the more focus UPSC mainly gives on the climate change areas where you need to know the basics about the climate change and the contemporary aspects and the various initiative undertaken at the regional, national and uh, international level also. right? And in this acts and policies you have various legislations enacted by the government uh, like wildlife protection act, environment protection act, water pollution act. right? So various act, what are the statutory bodies under these acts, so these are focused under this acts and policies part. In international convention and treaties, since this formation of the club of Rome and limits to growth theory approach and uh, with the Rio summit, what are the organizations at the international levels have been formed like convention on biological diversity, united nation framework on uh, climate change etc. All these conventions and treaties are co covered under this topic right, so mainly these are the main topics where we have divided this UPSC syllabus right. Now let us after knowing this syllabus and the important topics let us see the 2019 UPSC preliminary examination questions. Now when we are focusing to this environment questions of 2019 prelims let us see the 
first what is what would be our approach our approach will be the question we will see the question from which area does it belong to right and what was the what was the past year previous year question asked on that respective topic and what could be the possible strategy right what is the question we see the question then what is what the area is it is from what was the past previous year question asked on the respective topic and what could should be our strategy right so let us begin so the first question mainly is about the national park right so national parks is related to the protected area network protected area network right so the question is asking that which national parks is completely lying in a temperate alpine zone right that is in a which climate region is a particular national park located where it is having climatic conditions of temperate alpine so earlier upsc asked the similar question that identify a national park where there is a transition from temperate region from tropical region from tropical region to the temperate region to the alpine region right so this was the earlier question and now they have asked the question to identify a national park which is completely in temperate alpine region right so are you understanding so this is how the upsc is asking the question that means regarding national park you should know its climate the location along with the location you should be aware about the particular climatic region where it is located now if you see this namdafa national park it was asked earlier also what was asked about this national park namdafa the particular species which is called as flying squirrel flying squirrel was asked where does it belong to namdafa right so namdafa was also earlier asked right nevra valley which is completely temperate similar and analogous question was earlier with respect to the climate where we have to identify a particular national park which had the which had the transition from tropical to temperate to alpine region right and you have to identify that which one was that okay so after seeing this area and the some some of the previous questions we have understood that regarding the national park what we need to be knowing is one area is that national park its location its physical location its physical location that is what are the uh, what is the mountain range or the river across it and also the climate related aspect of that national park right now let us see the second question second question is also mainly focusing upon the agastamalai biosphere reserve right so agastamalai biosphere reserve and which of the following are included in agastamalai biosphere reserve that wildlife sanctuaries and which are the national parks that are included in agastamalai biosphere reserve now if you see the earlier questions earlier the upsc asked about nilgiri biosphere reserve about nilgiri biosphere reserve right in this nilgiri biosphere reserve it asked about the lion tailed macaw lion tailed macaw right before that upsc asked about a meeting point at a particular wildlife sanctuary where basically eastern ghats and western ghats meet and that was satyamangalam right are you understanding so already some of the aspects are asked by the upsc and nilgiri biosphere reserve they we know that in nilgiri biosphere reserve there is nagar hole national park bandipur national park silent valley national park right vainad so all these national parks similarly on this trend this question was framed right that means we should know this is also a question related to protected area network in this protected area network we should know various biosphere reserves in india and what are the various national parks and wildlife sanctuaries included in it and these national parks we should know the animal species and the climate related to it and various physical aspects related to it so this is how we are going to analyze and this was the question that is first question is related to the protected area network second is also related to the protected area network then what was the then let us see the third question now the third question is regarding considering the statements regarding the asiatic lion double humped camel one horned rhino so this question is mainly about the biodiversity that is animal that is fauna right flora and fauna in that uh, this question is regarding the fauna that is animals upsc in earlier year had asked the question with respect to the relocation relocation of the asiatic lion right relocation of the asiatic lion from gir tiger reserve to kuno palpur right so we were asked basically to identify which national park was it right earlier the question was asked regarding kharai camel kharai camel and what are its peculiar features now similar to, to this asiatic lion one more animal which is 
फेमस फॉर यू पी एस सी और इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू पी एस सी इज टाइगर राइट टाइगर इज अ इंपॉर्टेंट इंडिकेटर स्पीसीज ऑफ अ ग्रास एंड इको सिस्टम एंड ऑल्सो इट प्रोवाइड्स लॉट ऑफ इको सिस्टम सर्विस ऑल्सो राइट एंड इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इन फूड चेन ऑल्सो सो टाइगर रिगार्डिंग टाइगर यू पी एस सी हज मल्टीपल क्वेश्चन फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी शुड नो द यू पी एस सी हज अबाउट द क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग दिस एम स्ट्राइब्स राइट देन यू पी एस ऑल्सो आस्ट अबाउट एन टी सी ए दैट इज नेशनल टाइगर कंजर्वेशन अथॉरिटी अंडर विच एक्ट इज इट इट इज वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू देन यू पी एस सी अबाउट वेरियस टाइगर रिजर्व्स राइट सो दीज आर द क्वेश्चन दैट यू पी एस सी हेज ऑलरेडी आस्ट राइट सो डिपेंड अपॉन दिस वी शुड नो दैट द पर्टिकुलर एनिमल्स पर्टिकुलर एनिमल्स आर सम ऑफ द एनिमल्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू पी एस सी दैट वी शुड मोर फोकस अपॉट एंड फर्दर दिस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑल्सो रिलेटेड टू द बायोलॉजिकल डाइवर्सिटी दैट इज इट इज ऑल्सो रिलेटेड टू द एनिमल राइट नॉट प्लांट्स और फ्लावर्स हेयर ऑल्सो यू सी दिस थर्ड सेट सम स्पीसीज ऑफ द मरीन मैमल्स आर हर्बियोज so which are these species upsc in 2013 had asked a particular species which was dungong dungong which we called as a sea cow right sea cow so if you are knowing that in 2013 a, a question was regarding identify which of the following species are mammals right then we are knowing that mammals some of the mammals are herbivorous in nature which are especially aquatic that are sea cows so that means this statement was true that means UPS has already given some of the guidelines. Depend upon that, we are basically dealing with this. Now, questions about turtle, herbivores, fish, etc., snakes, are viviparous. That means when we are dealing with biological diversity and some of the animals, we are we are we should also know some of its characteristic characteristic feature characteristic features. Like for example, is it a mammal? What is the mode of reproduction? Mode of reproduction production then. we should also know does it hibernate right okay so these are some of the characteristic features that we should know about a particular animal and that sh- that can be done by basically just internet browsing a small internet browsing can be done to basically go further one step to know about a particular animal species so this was also related to the biological diversity that is animal this question is also related to biological and an- diversity that is animal the further question also deals with biological diversity where basically this question is also related to animal species and in this animal species we have to basically identify the wildlife and where it is naturally found right so here we are knowing the iravadi dolphin blue finned mushir rusted spotted cat etc okay so earlier upsc has asked the questions regarding this gharial salt water crocodile salt water crocodile then gangetic dolphin also there are multiple species but some of the species i am just trying to show here that how upsc is asking earlier upsc asked about this gharia where is it found is it found in chambal naturally found in chambal or where else right the, about salt water crocodile upsc asked about if you want to find a salt water crocodile which national park should one visit right so it's baitarnika baitarnika right before that upsc asked at confluence of the two rivers right there are two rivers and at its confluence there is a particular national park so we had to identify that national park and where basically we find a salt water crocodile so these rivers were basically upsc mentioned as baitarni baitarni and brahmini and brahmini right so this is baitarnika national park and here we find salt water crocodile so around this almost two times upsc has asked the question so similarly we should find the animals whose iucn status is critically endangered or those animals which are in currently in news or a particular project is ongoing regarding that particular species we should find find that where is that animal basically found naturally what is its status and where what is its status and is there any initiative going regarding that particular species right so this is also related to biological diversity here from this point we have extended producer responsibility so it is it was introduced as a important feature in which of the following act so this question is regarding the acts and policies right national legislations acts and policies right just trying to tell here similarly if we s- see this next question this question deals around campa that is compensatory of forestation management and planning authority so this question is also related to the acts and policies aspect next question this question deals around this environment protection act this question is also related to the acts part right but before dwelling further i would like to highlight here about this act so that you will understand how the acts are to be studied now if you consider this 
EPA Act that is Environment Protection Act 1986 right one should know what was the uh, evolution of Environment Protection Act how was it evo evolved and what were the previous acts before this Environment Protection right after knowing that what one should do what is the aim and objective of this act what is the aim and objective of this act after understanding the aim and objective of this act what are the various statutory what are the various statutory bodies constituted what are the various statutory bodies constituted under this EPA for example we can do environment impact assessment we have ecologically sensitive zones we have genetically engineering appraisal committee we can form national Ganga river basin authority so these are all the questions UPC just asks us GEAC is constituted under which act so we need not to go in much detail rather we just need to know what is the act and under which act does this particular body or particular thing comes under right so that is that's it that is what needed right and here question is regarding environment protection act how does it empower the government of india right so once we are knowing this aim and objective and various things then you can easily solve this type of questions so but the thing here to note is that epa is a legislation which is multiple times focused by upsc also similar legislation is wildlife protection act 1972 this act is also multiple times asked by UPSC. Now, let us see this next. Here also the question is regarding the solid waste management rules. This is also related to the act part, right? So, sometimes the rules or the acts are being amended, are being amended or debated, or debated upon, right? Or debated upon due to certain issues, right? When these acts are being amended or debated, one should know what are the issues related to act and what is this act related to right so depending upon this one can know what could be the possible question that upsc may ask right similarly now let us understand what i said through this example indian forest act this indian forest act which is a colonial act was basically amended this was amended basically with respect to bamboo right this bamboo was basically grown that means forest dweller has right to fell the bamboos outside the non-forest areas right so this was the amendment done and that is what exactly UPSC asked right that means regarding this question is also regarding the acts so one should know the acts and what are the recent issue ongoing regarding this acts now let us consider this question so this question is basically asking us the percentage of forest cover and which is to be arranged in a particular chronology that is in an ascending order so this question is also related to the biological diversity considering the flora and fauna that is flora that is it is related to the forest now if we are if one is basically studying the current affairs then one candidate will know that recently the forest forest survey report forest survey report is been released 2019 and this forest survey report is very important for the UPSC perspective. Why? Because UPSC generally asked what is the forest cover, for example, forest cover. What is the forest cover with respect to percentage wise and area wise? Which, a which state has maximum forest cover? Which state has maximum percentage wise? Sorry, percentage wise maximum forest cover, right? So once, once one is uh, done with this forest cover, then one should move upon the wetlands UPSC has also asked regarding the wetlands wetland one should see that which wetlands are more inland wetland area is more or coastal wetland area is more right and whether the wetland area is increasing or decreasing which state has the maximum which state has the maximum wetland area similarly see regarding the mangroves mangroves which state has the maximum maximum area under the mangroves cultivation Second, whether mangroves are area under mangroves is increasing or decreasing. So these are the areas which one should focus from the forest survey report, right? So this was the question regarding the forest. Now considering the next question, here the question is regarding the cirrus cloud thinning technique, cirrus cloud thinning technique, and the sulphate injection of the sulphate aerosols, right? So this was regarding the global warming, right? That means this related this question is related to the climate change. This question is related to climate change and related research and development ongoing right now let us see the next question this question is about himalayan nettle himalayan nettle that means this is related or related to the biological diversity that is flora flora means plant species plant species right 
and UPSC generally tends to ask about the flora and the plant species from three perspectives. One is regarding invasive alien species, second is whether that species is medicinally, has medicinal utility, has medicinal utility or does it provide the ecosystem, ecosystem service, ecosystem service in a positive perspective, right. For example, UPSC has earlier asked about taxol which we get from Himalayan Eve, right. Then UPSC has also asked about red sanders, red sanders. UPSC has also asked regarding neem, okay. So, these are the particular flora that UPSC has already asked. So, on a similar perspective, the question with respect to the Himalayan nettle was asked. So, when you are studying a particular flora species which is currently in news or uh, basic in nature, one should know what is its utility, whether it is invasive or what is its property, right. Now, let us see the second question. Question next question is related to the pyrolysis and the plasma glassification. So, these are the various technologies which are leading basically to reduce the environmental pollution, right. These are the various technology are basically dealing with reducing the environmental pollution and the various research and development activities going on it, right. That means, this is an interlinked topic where mainly deals with the environmental pollution and related to it is research and development and energy aspect, right. Now, Similarly to this next question, if we see, it is related to the methyl hydrate, methane hydrate. That means, it is also related to the environmental pollution. Through this methane hydrate, it can be a sustainable source of energy and this is also related to the energy aspect, right. Earlier, generally nowadays, UPSC tends, tends to ask a question on clean coal technologies, clean coal technologies, right, clean coal technology, etc. So, similarly, next question is related to the hydrogen CNG. Similarly, this question is also related to the environmental pollution and related to the energy aspect. That means, through use of this hydrogen CNG, how can one reduce the environmental pollution? Similarly, UPSC also focuses upon the topics related to the solar energy, topics upon the solar energy, plasma classification, right. These are the topics which are dealing with the environmental pollution aspect and to reduce the environmental pollution. So, these are some of the focus areas of UPSC, where basically research and development or the clean technologies are being developed to mitigate the environmental pollution related uh, problems, right. Now, considering this question, this question is also related to the environmental pollution. However, in this question, the environmental pollution is from the perspective of the agriculture and the industry. So, here basically the, it will ask regarding the pollutants, right, which industry is having which pollutant or how is agriculture basically affecting the environmental pollution etc. Right. Now, considering the next question, co next question is regarding the microbeads and how is it released into the environment. So, it is also related to the environmental pollution that is it is also related to the pollutant. So, microbead is also a new type of a pollutant that is basically harming a particular type of ecosystem right that is a marine ecosystem right. So, that means the environment pollution along with this what are the various pollutants that are affecting the various ecosystem. Similarly, UPS has earlier asked the question regarding the pollutants that is what are the ground water pollutants throughout the India right that is arsenic, arsenic fluorosis or fluoride right. Also UPS has asked about the contamination of the e-waste generation what are the various pollutants that are being uh, basically filtered into the land surface and water surfaces due to the uh, e-waste right. So, that was also question earlier asked. So, ground water pollution that means UPC is asking the pollution related pollutants also. What are the various pollutants related to particular type of a pollution right. Now, let us see this question. What are the uh, pollutants uh, that has released into the atmosphere due to burning of crop mass crop or biomass residues. Similar that is this is also related to the environmental pollution. Similar question related to the steel industry. What are the pollutants from the steel industry has been asked twice earlier in the UPSC examination. That means, a particular industry and its pollutants or the particular type of a biomass burning and what are the various pollutants that are re released into the atmosphere. That means, we have to identify the pollutants, right. So, these are the type one type of the uh, question with respect to the environmental pollution. Now, if you see this aspect that is this is related to the international international convention, international convention or treaty topic, treaty topic. Now, UP, this question is regarding the Ramsar convention. UPSC has already asked multiple questions regarding this wetland, right. So, uh, UPSC has earlier asked, now they are asking about the Ramsar, earlier they had asked about the Montreux protocol, 
earlier they had asked about montres protocol i guess in 2013 or 14 right so this upsc asked what is the aim and objective of the montres protocol and now they are asking about the ramsa that means if we see the past year papers then we can get a fair enough idea that what we need to pro prepare in the upcoming for the upcoming examination and which topics are to be more focused upon so upsc has early earlier also asked about the wetlands considering indian wetlands where are the inland wetlands area under the inland wetlands more with respect to the coastal wetlands is it true or false so it's true so ups has also asked regarding this so one is much one is focusing more upon the wetlands then definitely he will score more because wetlands questions are frequently been asked by the upsc and this is how this analysis will help us to basically finalize our strategy regarding the preparation now these were the questions regarding the 2019 upsc preliminary examination so in a similar way just analyze let us see the some of the areas from the 2018 paper also now when we are seeing this environment preliminary question 2018 similar we will see the area area and what was earlier asked and what could be the probable area so the question is propis julifora right is was in news that means it is also focusing upon the biological diversity question is from biological diversity and flora as i earlier told you the question was about himalayan nettle in 2019 right earlier about red sanders right before that about neem before that with respect to himalayan eve right that means a particular species which are having particular properties and that will help the human and the ecosystem services are being asked by the upsc or some of the invasive species that will harm the ecosystem are being asked by upsc which are in news frequently right so this is related to biological diversity topic similarly here this is also related to biological diversity coral is one of the important topic for upsc from both prelims and mains point of per perspective right now uh, upsc is asked about the coral leaves if you see the coral leaves similar earlier type uh, earlier question asked on ecosystem was related to the symbiotic relationship symbiotic relationship so that means what are the lichens lichens is a symbiotic relationship between what right similarly if a question can be framed regarding coral reefs is a symbiotic relationship with respect to what right so this is also related to biological diversity question now if you see this question that is pakoi wildlife sanctuary this was in news so that is why it was asked during 2018 and uh, this is related this question is related to protected area network right earlier nam dafa was asked nam dafa was asked then after in 2019 nevra valley right now they asked about the pakhui wildlife sanctuary and what we have to do we have to just locate that is in which uh, state is it located right that means national parks one should know the location in which state is it is one should know which river is flowing through that national park is there any mountain range that is across this national park is there any animal important animal in this national park so these are some of the focus areas with respect to the protected area networks and one should focus from this perspective only right let us see the next question so next question is also related to the next question is also related to the envir environment that is energy aspect that is through various research and development ongoing in the energy sector how can it help in mitigating the climate change and how will it help in the decreasing environmental pollution aspect right so this is related to the energy that is the solar energy generally the question on the solar energy that is photovoltaic cell etc are been mainly focused upon right now next question is related to the carbon fertilization so carbon fertilization mainly uh, we can categorize this question under the climate change that means what is carbon fertilization climate change why because in climate change nothing but increase in the amount of carbon dioxide so how will this carbon dioxide affect in a positive sense and in both in a negative sense so henceforth one should be aware about the basics related to the climate change that is the terms like carbon fertilization what is greenhouse gas right what is the, what are the properties of the co2 which part of the electromagnetic spectrum the co2 absorb does it absorb the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum or which part right so these are the already asked questions of upsc so one should know that from climate change the upsc is also focusing on the basics along with the international conventions and the policies consider this question which deals about the sixth mass extinction this sixth extinction is mainly related to the climate change which basically deals with the over exploitation of the resources and the decreasing carrying capacity of the 
ecosystem right so here we can club it under the climate change aspect similarly the next question is regarding the ngt and cpcb as we know this ngt and cpcb can be clubbed under the act or the legislation portion now upsc is already focusing or multiple times focusing upon the acts and the legislation parts in this acts and legislation part what is upsc focusing is that what are the various bodies constituted under this acts and legislation for example once upsc has asked about this body called as animal welfare board animal welfare board so upsc asked is it a statutory body first of all and if it is so then under which act it is present right or under which act it is constituted in a similar way here also the question is asking about ngt whether is ngt is established by act and cp is established by executive order so is it true or false so one should know the water protection act water pollution act so th then only one can know that whether the cpcb is a executive or a statutory body right a similar question on the act or a legislation is asked right so this act is related to the forest right act in this act upsc is uh, upsc has asked about that whether this definition of critical wildlife habitat is included in this act or not that means when whenever we are studying the act or legislation one should know the important characteristics important characteristics along with the aim and objective right aim and objective along with that important terms related to the particular act and what are the statutory bodies what are the statutory bodies under the particular act right so this is how basically acts or the legislation should be studied now the next question is related to the page that is partnership for action on a green economy and it's a united Mechan nation mechanism that means this question is related to the international convention international convention earlier upsc used to generally focus upon the conventions like cbd uh, then unfcc right in a generalized way that means for example you earlier upsc asked the question related to the cartagena cartagena protocol nagoya protocol annex 1 countries and annex 2 countries etc right also upsc has earlier asked about red red plus mechanism then you had about united nations convention and convention on drought and desertification so upsc has already asked about these questions now what is happening is that in the contemporary times generally the low profile or the low rated organizations or the conventions or the coalitions are being focused upon which is very difficult to trace upon so what one needs to do is that what along while, while one is studying a particular convention one should know its chronology chronology how is that formed then along with this chronology one should also note also note the current issues ongoing around the particular aspect right and um, and further this what one one needs to do is that one needs to just google or browse the websites of unfcc cbd etc just to know whether there is something value addition we are getting in on that particular websites in about us page right so this question was related to the international convention similarly this question that is momentum for change climate neutral now is also related to the international convention part international convention part the next question that deals about global alliance and climate smart agriculture is also dealing with the international convention right so these conventions or the various coalitions or the various alliances found for the sustainable type of solutions or climate smart solutions regarding the agriculture or any other sector and which will help in uh, environment protection are basically asked by upsc in the past two to three years so one should also be attentive regarding such of the alliances and the coalitions that will help in the environment mitigation right environment pollution uh, mitigation measures right so these were the questions from the 2018 that means uh, if we find out some of the general observation from 2019 to 18 then we can find that some of the general observations uh, we can find from the last year paper is that upsc is generally focusing mainly upon the these areas right that means national parks wildlife sanctuary so a particular where is a particular national park located upon where is it located right and in whether what are the various national parks and wildlife sanctuaries in a particular biosphere reserves right and along with this national parks what is the climate of that climate of that national park and what is the physiography of that region physiography is nothing but what is the uh, is there any a river or is there any you can say mountain range okay is there any animal specific critically endangered animal listed by IUCN in that national park present so one should know about this so this has been focused upon by UPSC second is 
considering biological diversity second point is related to biological diversity in that especially the fauna part that is animal part animal species where are they basically located where they can be found and nowadays this is mainly focused that is characteristic features that means whether that animal is a mammal whether uh, that is a herbivore whether that is a carnivore right or whether that is a uh, whether that animal is hibernates or not that are been mainly focused upon that means one should know the characteristic features for that what we can do is that when we are studying the animal species what we can do after studying that animal species one can just google and just see the basics about that animals from internet so one can have value addition and that can be done out of curiosity so characteristic features of that animal also invasive species that are in news are been mainly focused upon so in general in invasive species flora part is mainly focused upon that is himalayan nettle himalayan nettle himalayan eave right red sanders etc those are in news that may be asked now third is related to the energy aspect so this is a important part where basically clean energy related topics are been asked that is plasma gasification methyl hydrates etc right hydrogen cng okay so whatever the new technology are been developed upon that will help in environment pol protection and uh, mitigation pollution mitigation are been asked by the upsc right next is pollution related questions this pollution and energy pollution and energy should be studied simultaneously pollution related new technological solutions laws recent measures and initiatives that means pollution related laws right for example uh, e waste management rules right extended producer responsibility if there are any changes upsc may ask it right pollution related new technological solutions if there is a particular new technological solution with respect to the delhi pollution then upsc may ask it right torrefaction so what is torrefaction upsc may ask is in basics right so if you are there is any research going on uh, on a new technology then upsc generally tend to ask that new technology and what is this related to that means they will just ask what is this related to and how will it help uh, the, you need not to do phd upon that technology or research right you just need to know what is that related to now next upsc is mainly focusing upon the international coalitions alliance funds at regional and global level for the various sustainable climate initiatives that means sustainable climate initiative related to the agriculture then about regarding particular pollutants that is about a black carbon specific then agriculture various coalitions that just now we saw the clean coalition so one should be also focusing upon the coalitions and alliances and the way the questions are asked are nowadays more of interlinked and mapping based questions are also right interlinked means this for example biological diversity topic should be studied with the protected area nature topic that means when you are studying flora and fauna that is animal and plant species one should also study the various national parks and wildlife sanctuary also when one is studying about environmental pollution aspect one should study the climate change related topics and along with this one should also study the energy and the research and development topics related to that particular aspects that means environmental pollution climate change and energy that is clean energy this all should be studied in a particular way that is this is the way that one should approach these three topics and these two topics should be approached in this way and while you are doing this for these two topics one should have basically atlas for mapping right because mapping location based questions are increasing one one needs to know where is this particular national park located etc right so these are some of the general trend of observations from the last few years papers that upsc is asking after that what we are going to do that we are just going to sum up depend upon this observation that how should one approach and what are the aspects that one should focus upon while studying the particular important topics so important topics that we have just understood is th that by in biological diversity which one should focus upon more upon the fauna that is along with that national park should be studied so this both should go in tandem that is in uh, cohesion right similarly energy pollution and climate change should go in uh, coalition then we have international coalition and various efforts now after discussing this 2019 and 2018 prelim papers and understanding the important areas that upsc is focusing upon and after that what we uh, has have done is that we have drawn the general observation that where upsc is mainly asking the questions from right and the areas that is along biodiversity climate change or energy or international convention and acts and policies right so these are the some of the main areas that upsc is asking the questions upon so the question now remains that how should one prepare for the upcoming preliminary examination 2020 so the strategy that one should follow for upcoming preliminary 2020 uh, is that what we are going to see in this next few slides right so now if when you are considering this 
topic of biodiversity in this biodiversity what one should do one should divide this biodiversity in three areas that is bi basics flora that is a plant species and the animal species in basics generally upsc generally tends to ask the basic question that where is biodiversity high that whether that is high in a lower altitude or lower latitudes right why is that biodiversity is more in northeast region or northeast india it is due to the confluence of the two bio geographic it is due to the confluence of the two bio geographic realms right so ups has already asked this basic question so one should also focus upon this basics of biodiversity along with this when one is dealing with the plant aspects of biodiversity that is plant species one should know the invasive alien species or the species that are recently is news and basically which are harming the ecosystem or the particular uh, farming or the agriculture right that one should focus upon and some of the species which are providing the medicinal and the ecosystem services that should also be focused upon for example uh, red sanders was in news right himalayan nettle himalayan nettle then himalayan eve right neem so these are the some of the species that ups has already asked and analogous to these species one should study the contemporary uh, species of the plants that are in news now when uh, when one is studying the animals since there are multiple animals uh, that is iucn listed critically endangered endangered and vulnerable so one may feel that all the animals are important so how should one approach for the fauna that is the animal part of the biodiversity so what one can do is that from past 2013 till 2019 one should basically analyze all the questions related to the biodiversity especially the animals right in this animals see what all animals the ups has already asked try to know what is their current status of iucn are they critically endangered injured or vulnerable after that try to see where are they located after that try to see what is their location in which national park or wildlife sanctuary are they located and post that try to see the some of the characteristic feature like uh, what are the character where the whether it is a mammal whether it is a herbivores whether it is a carnivores right is there any animal specific project going on does that animal hibernate etc so see some of the character features and one can do this by just googling uh, that animal on the internet right so this is how one can tackle the bio biodiversity or biological diversity aspect now as i earlier told this biodiversity topic should be studied along with the along with the protected area network topic protected area network topic that is along with the national park wildlife sanctuaries and biosphere reserves and along with this the legislations related to it legislations means which legislations wildlife protection act 1972 one should study this in a comprehensive way biodiversity protected area networks and legislation of wildlife protection act when one is dealing with this protected area networks which needs to be studied along the biodiversity when we are studying first one should study what are the biosphere reserves right in that biosphere reserves what are the important national parks and wildlife sanctuaries important national parks and wildlife sanctuaries first study biosphere reserves of the india right what is their location of the biosphere reserve what are the peculiar characteristics peculiar characteristic features of that biosphere reserve in that try to know what are the national parks and the wildlife sanctuary now one is studying when one is studying national parks try to know where is that national park located for example namdafa namdafa right for example manas or consider nevra valley nevra valley for that matter consider bhaitarnika try to know where are they located are they located at the confluence of any two rivers like for example bhaitarnika what is the climate for example uh, climate of this namdafa does it have a complete completely tropical type of tropical uh, type of climate or does it have a transition from tropical to temperate to alpine type of climate right so try to know the climatic aspects of that particular national parks try to know the in which state it is located what are the endemic species what are the endemic species endemic species located with respect to that national park for example lion tiger macau is the endemic species related to this nilgiri biosphere reserve right then is there any mountain range that is passing what are the rivers that are passing through that national park for example corbett national park corbett national park and rajaji national park through which national park does this ganga river flow right or through which this gambhir river flow right so 
one should know which are this rivers and uh, some of the national parks through which this rivers flow right for example kevla dev ghana national park kevla dev ghana national park is asked by upsc twice earlier also so which is the river that is flowing through this kevla dev ghana national park and what is the species migratory bird species that is visiting this kevla dev ghana national park so one should have fair enough idea over this right when one is studying this national park that is along with the location climate rivers mountain ranges and what are the animals and that animals are you seen status and some of the characteristic features so this is way the basically the biodiversity and after that protected area network in that national park should be studied now when one is studying regarding this environmental pollution aspect this environmental pollution aspect is nowadays getting more dynamic and this is linked directly to the climate change this is directly linked to the climate change right and when one is basically studying climate change one should also have the idea about the various research and development going on in the energy sector energy sector related to the clean energy technology clean energy technology okay is it fine after this when one is studying environmental pollution divide this into multiple topics that is environmental pollution first know all types of air water land okay then have about e waste e waste e waste then solid waste know about all types of pollution after that know what are the pollutants what are the pollutants what are the pollutants for example air pollution if you are dealing with this pollutants that means uh, what are the pollutants with respect to the steel industry with respect to steel or the coal industry what are the pollutants that are released uh, through this biomass crop burning right biomass burning right after this one should also know when water pollution water related pollution for example the concepts like basic concepts like eutrophication right also one should also have the fair enough idea about the water protect pollution act water pollution act 1974 okay what is the uh, statutory body constituted under it that is central pollution control board so it is constituted under this act that means cpcb is a statutory body and not a executory body what are the pollutants uh, due to the water that is arsenic Uh, fluoride etc right e waste pollution what is epr extended pollution producer responsibility what are the various rules that means these are the various basics related to it and when we one is studying various basics and all the types and related pollutants one should also in simultaneously see are there any rules or the regulations related to that particular type of pollution post that when one is post that government has one should know that various policies and measures that upsc asked regarding the environment pollution and the mitigation measures for example index upsc has already ab- asked about national uh, air quality index right so what are the various pollutants one has to choose out of this four which one is not which one is or which one is not right which one is or which one is not the index pollutant included under the national air quality index right so indexes related to various pollution then various new energy technology that we are already seeing technology ongoing technology and various initiatives related to the pollution at national regional global right for example upsc has already uh, asked about green india mission so basic question regarding this green india mission so this will also help in the green india mission will also help in the mitigating the environmental pollution in at the global level uh, the international organizations even fcc will help in mitigating the environmental pollution aspect so this is how the environmental pollution should uh, one should study and that should go in a uh, correlation with the climate change and energy aspect also now let us see the climate change after this environment pollution when we are studying this climate change study the basics about climate change for example wo- what is co2 and what are the properties of co2 how is co2 leading to the greenhouse gas effect co2 absorbs the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum so these are all the questions that upsc asked, asked already then what is carbon fertilization fertilization so these are related to the basics so one should first focus upon the basics and once the basics are clear then move on towards the contemporary issues related to clean energy technologies which are in news right upsc will just ask what is this technology related to what is pyrolysis plasma glassification what is this related to just know that right that is related to the waste to uh, energy Uh, technology right waste to energy conversion technology so similarly for climate change mitigation what are the new technologies that upsc that upsc may focus upon one can get a fair enough idea from that right and what are the initiatives and the policies that the national and the global level ongoing similarly unfccc and related developments 
that should definitely one focus upon right that means uh, one should focus upon what are the various conference of parties ongoing right so recently chile madrid chile madrid action plan right earlier cato wise right so all these earlier C uh, cops etc what are the various outcomes of that what are the various outcomes for example upsc asked about this uh, paris agreement paris agreement when was it formed what is this indc intended national development contributions right so what is this indc indc is related to what in a simple way it will just ask what is indc and what is this related to no need to do very uh, more phd on that particular topic right so be aware about various conference of parties related to the unfcc and what are the outcomes is there any initiative or is there any coalition or is there a particular fund formed right so be attentive regarding this point also now when one is studying about this legislation parts acts and legislation as i earlier told that this acts and legislation part is a important part since every year the questions are been more asked upon for example indian forest act it was amended with respect to bamboo so bamboo from non forest area was excluded right that means this becomes important right now when is considering ep wildlife protection act 1972 np uh, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries are cons constituted under it so which are the various statutory statutory bodies under wildlife protection act so upsc will just ask what is which are the statutory bodies which are constituted under the wildlife protection act so have just idea about it or what are the various schedules schedule 1 schedule 2 schedule 3 4 5 and 6 what does this 6 schedule represent what does this 5 represent what does this 1 represent so just have idea about it because upsc has already about asked about what is schedule 1 one should have the fair enough idea about schedule one of the wildlife protection act then water pollution act cpcb that is central pollution control board recently upsc asked the question about the cpcb that means cpcb is a statutory body because it is constituted under a particular legislation right similarly forest conservation act air pollution act environment protection act that is national ganga river basin authority environment impact assessment uh, the genetic re engineering appraisal committee ecological sensitivity zone all on all these area upsc has already asked the questions upon so one should be aware that these are included these are under the epa that is they derive their mandate from this act that means while studying one should know the chronology how the various acts are found with respect to what the particular act relates to right then we have national forest policy biological diversity act that is related to national biodiversity authority in Uh, then ips right then recently asked question about forest right act so this critical wildlife habitat it is defined under this forest right act yes it is defined that means just one should know this act okay and what is the minister nodal ministry here the nodal ministry is ministry of tribal affairs and this that is critical wildlife habitat it is defined under forest right act so in this way one should prepare through chronologically the various acts what are the various statutory bodies under it and what are the important areas or the concepts defined under that act right and how are the center and the state uh, related to this act and what are the powers given to this uh, center and the state regarding this act okay so this is how you should basically approach the environment act institution and the policy related aspects now consider this last aspect of this uh, strategy that is international conventions and strategy right one should basically start uh, knowing what is the chronology first what is the objective of each what is the objective of each convention or the treaty or the coalition and what is the recent outcomes summit outcomes right for example before starting with this unep that is united nations environment uh, program of 1972 one should also have a fair enough idea about the club of rome club of rome so start from here club of rome what is club of rome what is limits to growth okay and what from well will you understand this this uh, everything is given in ncert after knowing this come to this unep when one is studying unep simultaneously study the funds that is for example green environment global environment fund so who all contribute to this fund who are the main contributing agency who will manage this fund right who will manage this fund who will contribute to this fund who will manage this fund and to which programs does this gef fund to to which programs does this gef fund to right then what are the various report reports published by even ep whether this even ep is uh, uh, hosting any another important organizations body for example teeb so this is also a question so in this way one should know this is the evolution and this is how basically even ep uh, of 1972 which has a headquarter at nairobi kenya 
repos uh, releases a particular report it also host a particular office and for basically it's working it has a particular fund that is gef and it will basically help the various bodies that is cbd unfcc sustainable development uncd right post this one should all know that keep after 20 years there was a review summit 1992 where its outcome was cbd C UN UNFCC Sustainable Development UNCCD. Here, basic just know that these are the things that are under CBD. That is Nagoya Protocol, Cartagena Protocol, Hyderabad uh, Pledge, and IG Biodiversity Targets. So UPC has just asked about uh, asked earlier that Cartagena is related to what? So in simple words, Cartagena Nagoya is related to the Convention on Biological Diversity. In a similar way, just have fair enough idea about UNFCC. What is Kyoto? What is CBDR, GI, CDM? Now this will be replaced by SDM, that is uh, Sustainable Development Mechanism, etc. So know why will it be replaced? What is Kyoto? When was this found? When it came into force? Right? What are the various funds? Adaptation fund is what, etc. Special Climate Change funds. What is Paris Agreement? This was asked earlier also, as I earlier told, intended national uh, determined contributions of every country. Right? Then what are the COPs? That is Bonn Conference, Katowice Conference, Chile Madrid Conference. So, what are its outcomes? Okay. For example, uh, recently there was a summit of COP14 held in Delhi, and there is a Delhi declaration. So, UPC will just ask what is Delhi declaration related to? Delhi declaration was in news related to what? It was related to the UNCCD. Okay. So, just have a fair enough idea about it. All right. Or sim and to give an analogy regarding this chronology, when one is studying ozone depletion, study in a Study in a chronology. That is, first there was Vienna, which was related to just ozone layer. Then Montreal related to ozone depleting substances. Then Kigali was more focused related to the HCFCs. Similarly, wetlands, as I earlier told, wetlands is a focus area. So just know that Ramsar was recently asked earlier. UPSC asked about Montrex. Then there is also a particular uh, declaration called as the Changwang Declaration. That means international conservation strategy should be studied in a chronology. One should know the objectives, the reports, and the Various outcomes of the recent summit undertaken of the respective bodies, right? And this is how the international convention and the strategy should be prepared. So till now, what we have discussed is the important areas and the focus areas that one should focus more upon, and in what way particular topic should be approached that we have studied, and in which way the two topics should be clubbed or the three topics should be clubbed. In what way should one read the current affairs related to that topic that we have seen in the earlier. Slides of this video session. Now let us see the what are the sources from where basically one can study the environment. See now the questions of the environment are more dynamic and some of the questions are out of the box. So this does not mean that one should diversify its sources. Rather than diversifying the sources, one can study the limited sources, revise it more times, right? And those sources in that source only while studying current affairs, you can do slightly Google. That means basically you can browse internet related to certain topics so that it can give you more better age or better understanding of that respective topic. But before that, one should have very much good understanding of the NCRTs, especially the uh, NCRT of the 12th standard, right? This 12th standard biology NCRT has four topics. So that is organization, population, ecosystem, biodiversity conservation, and environment issue. One should be very thorough with this uh, the NCRT and these topics of this NCRT. Similarly, this class 8, 9, 10th, 11, 12th, especially uh, related to biological diversity, wildlife, national parks, etc. One should focus upon these chapters. That is chapter number. Two or various uh, chapters, chapter number five of standard nine, etc., should be focused upon eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So these one should be very thorough with this NCRTs to have the very clear understanding of the basics of the environment and ecology. All right. After that, if you are trying to see the book related to the any reference book related to the environment, we generally tend to read the Shankar Environment Book. Yes, this book relevance is decreasing, but still this book is an important book to. For the conceptual clarity, so one should also go through this book of the Shankar Environment. Post that nowadays, since some of the factual questions are asked regarding the statutory bodies, etc., one should be very thorough with this India Air Book Environment Chapter, which are the statutory bodies under which Act is what particular body is constituted, etc. And current affairs, and this current affairs should be applied uh, to current affairs should be applied to the basics, and current affairs should be read from the perspective of what UPSC has already asked. From that perspective, try to study the current affairs from uh, for the current year. Right. And post that to tackle or for better understanding, one should also basically you make use of the internet for clear conceptual clarity, right? And having more more depth knowledge of the particular topic. So internet is also very good source for this uh, study of the environment and ecology. 
Now, after just studying the sources for the environment, let us now move on to consolidate the strategy for the environment prelims. Right. So, the first one, first most important step for the environment prelims is after knowing the syllabus. After knowing the syllabus, one should analyze the past year paper papers from 2013 till 2019. Right. That is, which are the questions asked from the biodiversity? Right. That is, what are the questions of biological diversity? What are the questions of the climate change? What are the questions related to the pollution? What are the questions related to the acts? What are the questions related to the international organizations, etc.? So, these are the areas, main areas from where the questions are coming. So, try to analyze the way the questions are asked. The, that is, are the questions of a static in nature? Are they applied? Are they interlinked? If they are interlinked, then to which topics? Are they interlinked to geography or to science or to current affairs? Right. So, in this way, try to analyze on your own on your own the past year papers of the environment and the respective topics. After that try to list as I earlier told these are some of the important on your own also try to list more important topics and the areas right. After that keep on reading and revising the basics and the current with respect to the previous that means with respect to the previous year only you have to read the current affairs that means else current affairs is a very vast uh, vast section where you will get basically lost. That means you will basically get lost if you are studying for multiple current sources rather stick to only any one source and read it for multiple times right. Then comes the important part that is revision. Revision is the most important part without revision it is very difficult to internalize also and to consolidate the things what you have read. So that means revision parts of forms a very important part in the consolidating the strategy for the environment prelims 2020. Next comes the mapping map that is a mapping based questions and to have the holistic understanding or the pictorial understanding to make a educated guess and to eliminate the options eliminate one should do mapping from a very uh, good atlas one should have the habit to continuously look into the atlas to know the places right or where is the particular river located this will help not only for environment or for rather for uh, geography also right and post these steps try to simultaneously solve the mcqs through any test series you can basically try to solve as many as possible mcqs Th solving mcqs will help you to basically revise and consolidate your topics and basically internalize those topics so henceforth it will be very easy for you in the examination hall to eliminate the options so in this video basically what we have done is that we have basically seen the important areas and the focus areas that we need to focus up more upon to basically maximize our score and i hope that this video will help you to maximize your score in the environment section of the upcoming preliminary examination 2020 and I wish you a very good luck and uh, wish you all the very best for the upcoming examination. Thank you.